Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve single threaded CPU. This problem actually just came out today and it's a pretty good one. I just solved it. So we are given n tasks labeled from zero to n minus one. And each one of these tasks has two fields or two values. One is the in queue time. So this is the time that the task will be added to our queue. And the second value is the processing time. So that's the amount of time that this task is gonna take to be completed. This basically tells us that we are going to have some kind of queue structure. Let's continue reading this problem to understand a little bit more about this queue that we're gonna be needing. So we have a single threaded CPU, meaning it can only process a single task at any given time. And so this is the information of how it's gonna decide which tasks to process in which order. So if there are no available tasks to process, the CPU is gonna remain idle. Basically that tells us if our queue over here is empty, meaning there's no tasks that are uh, lined up to be processed, then our, our CPU isn't gonna do anything, makes sense so far. So second thing, if the CPU is idle and there are available tasks, we are always gonna choose the tasks with the shortest processing time. That means if there were two tasks in our queue, let's say one task was one one and the other task was two two. Remember that the second value tells us the processing time. So in this case, which one of these two tasks are we going to pick? We're going to pick the first one, 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 because it has a smaller processing time. So this basically hints to us that this queue that we're using, it should be a priority queue or it should be a min heap because we're always going to be picking the task with the smallest processing time. That makes sense that we would want to have a min heap to choose that smallest processing amount uh, task. And next, once a task is started, the CPU will process the entire task without stopping. So let's say it's time equals one, right? And let's say the task takes three units of time. That means the task is gonna finish when we are at time equals four units or whatever, let's just call it seconds. So that's pretty intuitive, right? That makes sense. It's a single threaded CPU. It can only stop once the entire task is finished. And also the CPU can finish a task and start a new one instantly. That also makes sense. And look, the only thing we wanna do is return the order in which the CPU will process the task. And when they say the order, they mean the original index of the task. So take a look at this example over here. We're given four tasks, right? The first task, one means that that's the time that it's gonna be added to our queue over here. Two means that that's how long it's gonna take for the task to finish processing. So your question might be, what time do we start at? Well, we could say we start at time equals zero, or we could say we start at the smallest time that's present inside of our task list, which in this case is gonna be one. So, okay, it's time equals one. What does that mean for us? That means we can add any of these tasks that have a, have a queue time of one or less and then add them to our queue, our priority queue or our min heap, whatever you wanna call it. So since we're gonna be adding uh, tasks to our queue based on the smallest in queue time, doesn't it make sense for us to have this task list and then sort it by the first value of each of these pairs? Because remember the first value is the in queue time. They tell us that up here, right? The in queue time is the first value. The second value is the processing time. So the good thing for us that this is already in sorted order, but if it weren't, we would wanna sort it based on the first value of each of these pairs. Take a look at this first one. We can cross this out and add it to our queue one, two. So one means that it was added at time one, two is the amount of time it'll take for it to process. So remember, we're always taking the shortest processing time from our queue. There's only one value in our queue right now. So let's cross it out. And then let's say we're processing one, two, right? We're processing this right now. As you can see, it's going to take two units of time for it to process. Therefore, we're going to finish when the time is updated and time is now set to three, right? We added two units of time. We updated this to three. 
But don't forget, remember what we wanted to return was the order in which the CPU tasks will be processed. What do they mean by the order? Well, they mean the original index of each of the tasks. So remember this task was index zero. So to the result, let's put the result down here. I'm going to add zero to the result. But the question might be to you, how are we going to remember the original index of each of these pairs? Well, what we're actually going to do in the code is to each of these, we're going to add the original index. So this value would actually have another value added to it as zero. So this would actually be three values together, one, two, and zero. Zero is telling us the original index of this pair. Now, now so far we've gotten one task completed. Now take a look, our time is at three, right? So let's look at our task list. Take a look at this task two, four. Since this task is added at time two, and right now we're at time three, we can cross this out and add it to our queue. So so we're going to add two, four to our queue. We're also going to add one more value to it, a one. One is telling us the original index of it, right? So this is two, four, one. That's what's going to be added to our heap. We can see that there's actually one more value we can add to our heap, three, two. The reason we can add this is our time is three. Remember, the in queue time of this task is three. Therefore, the condition is met to add this to our queue. We'll add three, two to our Q. We'll also add another value to it, 2. The 2 tells us the original index of this value. So now you can see that there's two values in our Q, which, remember, how are we going to decide which one of these two values to pop from our Q first? Remember that we are using the time it takes to decide what to pop first. So in reality, we actually don't need to add this first value to the queue, right? We only need this pair of values. The first value tells us the amount of time this task is gonna to take to process. The second value in the pair tells us the original index of that value. So these are the values that we actually need. Now, which one are we gonna pop first? Obviously this bottom one, right? Because it takes less time to process. The first value is a two, meaning that it takes two units of time to process this task. So let's take it out now. So we just popped that two, two from our Q, so two is the original index of it. So two is the value we're gonna to add to our result. And remember this task took two units of time to complete. Therefore, we're gonna cross this three out, add two to it. So now the time that we're at currently is five. So now we're at unit five. So let's check if there are any more uh, tasks that we can add to our min heap. There's only one task left and this task is four one. That means this task starts or can be added to our queue at time four. Right now we're at time five. Therefore this task can be added to our queue. Four one, right? So we're kind of running out of space. Let me just add a little chunk of space. So four one is being added to our stack. I'm gonna add one more value to it, three, because three is the original index of this value. So that's what we're adding. And we don't actually need the four, that's basically unnecessary. So the two values that we have are one, three. It's a little bit messy, sorry about that, but hopefully you can see it, one, three. The one value tells us that this task takes one unit of time to complete. The three tells us that the index of this value was originally three. Okay, so it's a little bit messy, sorry about that. So we have two values left, this four, one, and this one, three. Which one of these are we gonna pop? Well, which one takes less time to complete? The one, three, of course. So let's cross that out, pop it from our stack. We popped one, three. The original index of that value was three. So that's what we're gonna be adding to our resulting list. So we add that three to our list. One means that the unit of time this task took to complete was one, so we can increment our time by one, so we can change it from five now to six. I'm just gonna write over it right now. So it's now six. So there's no more tasks. You can see our input list is now empty. We went through every task. So now our queue though has one value left, you can see, so that makes it easy to decide what to pop from it. We pop the four one. And remember, we only really care about that second value because it's the index. So we can take that index, which is one, and add it to our resulting output list. So take a look at our output list. It's zero, 
two, three, one. That tells us the order in which the tasks are going to be completed. Take a look at the example output. Zero, two, three, one. That's exactly what we wanted. That's exactly what we needed. So I hope that this kind of gives you a general idea of how we're going to solve this problem. We're going to be using a min heap and the exact algorithm or the exact code I'm going to show you right now. Let's take a look. Hopefully it'll make more sense. Okay, so the first thing diving into the code that we're going to do is we remember we're going to be taking this task list, so tasks.sort. We're going to be sorting this task list, right? And what's the key that we're going to use to sort it? Well, we're going to use a function, a lambda function. So we're going to take every single task t. How are we going to decide what to sort it by? Well, remember, we're going to be sorting it by the in queue time, right? So that's going to be the first or the zeroth value of that task. That's how we're going to be sorting it, right? So since we're sorting these values, we're changing the order of the values, which is obvious, right? But we do want to preserve the original index. So how am I going to do that? Well, before we sort it, I'm going to go through every task in the task list. In Python, I'm doing a little bit of a trick where we can get the index as well as the task. That's what enumerate is doing. But I'm taking every single task t and all I'm doing is adding one more value to it. The value I'm adding is the index of that of the value. I'm taking the index of every single task and adding it to that task so that we can preserve the original ordering in case that we want the original index, which we do. But so after we add the original indices, then we're allowed to change the order because then we can remember the original index. Let's also declare a couple of arrays, one resulting so we can return the result of the tasks. Second, the min heap, right? We do need a heap or a queue for this problem. It's going to be a minimum heap. And a couple more variables. I is going to tell us the current task that we have uh, added to our queue. Time is going to tell us the current time that it is right now. So I can initially be zero. Time can initially be set to the first task or rather basically the task with the smallest in queue time. So that's what I'm doing by taking task of zero, zero. I'm taking the first task in sorted order with the smallest in queue time. And now we're basically just gonna keep looping while our minimum heap is non-empty or there are still some tasks left to go through that task list. If there are still some tasks left in our task list that we have not yet added to our minimum heap, then we're going to be adding those tasks right from the minimum heap. But we're only going to be adding the tasks that at position I, you can see the task if it's in queue time has already been passed, right? So basically what I'm saying is if the current time is greater than or equal to this tasks in queue time, then we can take this task, right? Task at position I, we're going to take that task and add it to our min heap. So in Python, we can do that like this heap Q dot heap push to our min heap. We're pushing this this task. But remember, we only care about two values of this task. We care about the tasks uh, processing time, which is at index one. We also care about the tasks index, which is at index two. So these are the only values that we need to take and actually add to our uh, minimum heap. So for any particular task, we're only adding the processing time and the index, the original index of that task. And obviously, every time we add a task, we want to increment that index I so that we can move on to the next on to the next task. Now, there's a couple cases where we, what we where we do have to handle. So one is if the min heap is empty and the other is if the min heap is non empty. If the if it's non empty, this is basically the simple case. We can take our min heap and pop from it, right? We're going to be popping obviously that smallest the task with the smallest processing time and that's going to happen naturally in Python. So as we pop from this min heap, we're going to be getting two values. One is going to be the processing time and the second is going to be the index just like those are the two only two values that we ended up adding to our min heap. So it makes sense that that's what we're going to get. So with the processing time, what we're going to do is increment our time, our global time, basically telling us how much time has elapsed since we finished this task or started this task and then finished it. 
And we're also going to be taking the index and adding that to the result, right? Because since we're finishing this task, we can add it to the result and we're basically tracking the order in which we're completing these tasks. And so that's the simple case, right? The else case, if the min heap is non-empty, obviously then we can pop from it. Now, if the heap is empty, what are we going to do? If the heap is empty, what does that tell us? That tells us that there's no uh, tasks that we're waiting to do. That means our CPU is sitting idle. So we're not doing anything. So then what are we doing? Well, we're waiting for time to pass. How much time do we need to pass? Well, let's just look at the next uh, task in our task list. So tasks at position I, and let's get the starting time of it, or, or rather the time that it's going to be in queued, added to our queue. This is the time. So we have it right here. So what should we do with this? We can advance time, right? We don't need to increment time by one. We can set time to a, this exact value because we're basically skipping. We're basically fast forwarding, right? Let's say the time was equal to two, but the next task, the in queue time, was equal to seven. We're not just going to wait, right? We're not going to set time equal to two, three, four, five, six, and then all the way to seven. No, we can skip that and just fast forward it to in Q7, right? That's what we're doing with this one line of code. This is the entire algorithm. Once we're done with this, we can return the result that we just got done building. And we know once this loop is done executing, that means we went through every single task added it to our queue or our min heap, and then we popped every single task from our min heap, added the index of that task to our result, and then finally we're returning that result. So this is definitely a tricky problem. We got some moving parts going on, but the main focus of this problem is the min heap and the fast forwarding of time. This is pretty necessary for this problem, unless you want to waste a lot of time by just incrementing time by one, and that probably would not be an efficient solution. So I hope that this explanation was helpful, and I hope the code is also helpful. If you enjoyed, Please like and subscribe, it supports the channel a lot, and I'll hopefully see you pretty soon.